Well, because I need to get popular somehow, and I'd rather not just stand on a street corner and throw eggs at people while I scream my YouTube link, the only other option is to make more ma uh, tutorials. So obviously this isn't the classic getting good at Godot stuff that I did like several months ago, because I think there was more kind of like progression and stuff, it was more of like a walkthrough. Um, but I think this, the sporadic Godot tutorials that I've named, is going to be a bit all over the place. So I'll, I'm, I'm opting to explain more like random specific things to a variety of skill levels. Um, so yeah, I've got a few more uh, lined up. I've got a few more scripts written. So we'll see uh, how this one goes and how well it's received anyway. Uh, so we'll to see if I should even bother making another one. So let's get down to business. I assume that most people reading this know what a tile set is, but for completeness, I'll give a brief explanation here. In Godot, there are two components to a tile system, one of which is the tile set, and one of which is the tile map. Now the tile set explicitly defines what each tile is, and the tile map uh, takes each of the definitions in the tile set and just lays them out into a grid. Um, it's not a very complicated thing, and if you don't get that to talk, that um, ex explanation, probably because I just explained it really badly, and as soon as we actually get into this, you'll think, ah, oh, yeah, it's that, and then you'll realize that I'm just bad. So here's an example of a tile set that I have from a game that I made called Mushroom the Ruckus. It's not a very good tile set, but don't worry about that, it's just an example. Uh, so as you can see here, there are a bunch of tiles, uh, each of which are 16 by 16 in size. This is just saved as a normal .png file, and it's in some folder in my project. However, we haven't actually finished creating a proper tile set as far as Godot is concerned, so let's get into the engine. So first, let's create a new scene, and we'll save it as something like tileset.tscn. This is something you should keep around, so you shouldn't just delete the delete the scene file as soon as the tileset jet data is generated, because if you want to make changes to the tileset, then you'll have to go into this scene and do these steps that I'm about to explain right now. Um, so you need to create a true tree root node of type node. I don't know if it really matters, but I always go for just the standard node, uh, and then add some sprites. Now, each sprite that you create will equate to one tile in the editor, with some exceptions that I'll get onto in a moment. However, at the moment, we're kind of at a crossroad. If you want to figure out how to do auto-tiling, you can skip this bit, but if you don't know how to do any tiling at all, then just watch. I'll Maybe I'll put a timecode in the description, um, if I remember. If, I, if this video goes up and I haven't done it, just tell me that I haven't done it and I'll do it. But anyway, yeah. Um, if you want to do auto-tiling, link in the description, which will put you further into the video when I start that. So, for standard tile set, you just add some sprite nodes and name it, some, uh, name it something unique. So, the name you give each sprite will correspond to the name that it's actually given in the tile set itself. So, when you are placing them in the tile map, they'll be identified based on the name you give it, so it's best to make it informative. Uh, also, if your tiles are all stuck together in one big PNG file like mine are above, you're going to have to load that PNG into each sprite and then set the region thing. Now, down in the uh, the node inspector for sprite, or I think, yeah, just a sprite, there's a uh, little region category, and under there, you can enable it, which will temporarily vanish your sprite because the region is set to a rectangle of size 0. So, you can change each of these properties down here. Uh, the first two, X and Y, are you know the starting, they're the position of the rectangle from the you know the top left corner, and the W and H are the width and height respectively. Uh, so you can just expand those. If you're making 16 by 16 tiles, the W and H will be 16. Uh, one more thing to note is that in order to create tiles that have collision, you'll actually need to add a static body 2D uh, as a child of the sprite. Also, I, you'll need to add a collision shape with the appropriate shape, all that stuff, uh, in order to map what the collider should be, and, and then you're, you're good to go. That's pretty easy. So, yeah, you've, you've done it. You've created a tile set. Well, not quite. You have one more step, which is really simple. You need to generate the resource file, or the .tres file, which I think stands for text resource, but don't quote me on that. Either way, it can be loaded by a tile map node in another part of your project. So when you make a tile map, there'll be a property which says tile set, and you will load in the uh, resource file 
um, corresponding to your tile set. So this is super easy. You have to go to Scene in the top left corner, down the menu to Convert to, and then select Tile Set. Then save your lovely tile set resource as something memorable, like tileset.tres. And then in somewhere else in your project, you can just create a tile map, uh, load tileset.tres into your tile map, and now you can start placing some tiles using this lovely menu that appears on the left hand side. Alright, here we are. So, auto tiling. You may or may not have just skipped to this point. If you did, you're smart, you don't know, you, did, you already knew. This is just, this is, there's no point to this bit. This is just being mean to the people who I, I wanted to explain it to them. This is not a good way to run a tutorial anyway. I'm going to stop ruining my own life now. Um, regardless of whether you want to at this point, you're going to have to put all the tiles that you want involved in the same sort of auto-tiling bit into the same PNG file, which is why mine are in the same PNG file. If they weren't, you could actually just load each sprite individually uh, into the, into a sprite node without setting the region, just have it be one to one. But in this case, you will have to do that. Uh, however, in this case, if you're doing auto tiling, do not set the region on this node. So, um, so you've created a tile map that has the tile set property pointing to your lovely tile set resource. Um, click on that resource to open it. Just click on it. You can click the arrow and press edit if you want, but it's easy just to click on the, the text. Uh, and you'll scroll down to the tile that's holding this big whole tile set sprite and click the is auto tile box, uh, as you can see there. I've named my t auto tiling tile to be all tiles since, as the name would suggest, it holds all the tiles. Uh, now you'll notice that a button along the bottom bar there says auto tiles. It has appeared at the bottom of the screen next to you know, output, debugger, audio animation, whatever else you might have there. So click that and it will open the auto tiling menu. Now before we do anything here, go to the left hand column where it would normally list your tiles and find the properties menu just sort of halfway down. Um, you can set the bit mask mode to 3x3 three three, or 2x2 two two if you want to but it's just a bit easier for 3x3 three three, uh, and the tile size for uh, to whatever size your tiles are. Mine. Uh, for instance, is 64 by 64, just because they're 16 by 16 tiles, which I have scaled up by a factor of four. Don't really worry about that. If that's confusing you, it isn't really relevant. Um, so now that you've done that, we can get into all this crazy auto tiling stuff in this auto tiling menu. Now you'll notice a, a few buttons. You have icon, bit mask, collision, occlusion, navigation, and priority. Uh, icon is the default tile to show if it can't work out which tile to put in a particular place. Um, so you can just pick whichever one works for you. It doesn't really matter. You might get better results if you want... Um, if you're doing grass, for instance, you probably want just a standard, like, middle of the grass um, tile, but it, it, pro it probably doesn't matter. Just pick whichever one you want, really. Uh, I have picked this lovely blue one uh, right there, but... Um, Either. Now for arguably the most important menu, which is the bitmask menu. This one is the one that decides how your tiles are automatically selected while they're actually being placed. Now, this is a bit confusing, and without somebody explaining it to you properly, you might not understand it. So I'm going to do my best, and if you don't understand it, go somewhere else. Um, each time you click on the, um, th this area, you'll notice that it creates a little red box inside one of these grids. So each tile here has nine potential spaces. If it's a 2x2 two two bit mask, it's only four. That's what a 3x3 three three bit mask is. Um, anyway, so each tile has nine spaces to put a red box in. Each red box basically means, put me here if there's a tile in this position relative to me. Initially, that is a bit confusing, but just carry on. You'll probably get it soon enough. So pretty much any tile that you want to show up needs a red box in the center, because that the center box represents the tile itself. Uh, if it doesn't, it, it, it will never place that tile um, willingly if the center one isn't picked because the center one says, hey, this tile exists. And so you're basically saying every time that tile is about to exist, it doesn't satisfy the condition because it doesn't exist. Again, very shaky explanation, but let's just keep going. So let's take this line of tiles in the middle first. The tile at the very top will only show up if the tile directly below it is also filled in, so I placed one red box in the center and one in the center bottom position. 
Similarly, the one at the very bottom will only show up if the tile directly above it is filled in, so I placed a box in the centre and a box in the centre top position. So let's take the top left corner of that blob to the left hand side. That corner will only show if 1. the tile to the right of it is picked, the tile to the or 2. the tile below it is picked, and 3. the tile to the bottom right is placed. Therefore, I put a red box in the 1 centre right position, 2 centre bottom position, and the 3 bottom right position. Again, don't think this is very clear, but just mess around with these things in mind and you will pick it up very quickly. So for these tiles, I didn't set any collision because they are meant to be walked all over by, well, anybody. They're just the standard ground grass tile stuff. But if you did want to set collision, you'd have added a static body 2D with a blank collision shape 2D node to the sprite back in tileset.tscn. And then you'd have to go to the collision menu in the top and draw in collision shapes for each tile. That bit's pretty easy, but also hellishly buggy as of Godot 3.0.2, so good luck. Changing set settings randomly, node hierarchy, saving resources and loading them, loading them again, it is a bit of a mess, but I'm pretty sure most of that's going to be fixed in 3.1. I mean, I know the auto-tiling thing is really new and they did not really advertise it, so it's clearly not um, up to their standards yet, but for now it's just uh, like a mess with it until it works and then never touch it again type deal. So. Good luck with that. Uh, I'm going to skip the occlusion menu because I don't really know what it does. Um, navigation is similar co to collision in that you just draw polygons onto each tile to map out a nice navigation polygon instance that you don't have to draw manually after placing the whole tile set. It isn't always useful since all of the tiles pla uh, above are places that I don't want people to walk on. Um, for example, if there's a solid house on grass, I'd rather the enemies look around the house rather than just try to barrel straight through it because that isn't going to work. Now the priority tab is actually quite cool. Basically, if you have mapped multiple tiles with all the same bitmask rules, then it'll randomly select one of those tiles to place when the conditions are met. However, the chance of one tile being chosen over another is actually perfectly random unless you modify the chances of it being chosen in this priority tab. So when selecting a tile, it'll highlight the other tiles that have the same bitmask, that have the same placement rules, and in the top it'll give you a fraction of how likely it is uh, to be placed compared to the other tiles. So you can select a tile you want to be placed and use the up or down arrows next to it to modify the chances. So if you took one of these and you said, yeah, I want to make this one very, very likely or very common for some reason, um, you can select it, it's got a 1 in 16 chance, or you can make it a 3 in 18 chance. Um, so 3, whatever percentage that is, it'll be placed. Um, and you can just keep increasing this as much as you want. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I've pretty much explained everything to do with auto-tiling. Uh, you can return to your tile map, select the all tiles tile, and start placing and it should start auto-tiling for you. Now if you want to know anything else about tile sets or auto tiling or whatever, then feel free to let me know. If you want a tutorial on another specific engine feature, then also let me know because I don't really know what to explain. I've got like a thousand hours in the Godot engine. It's a bit hard to have a beginner's perspective on this at the, at the moment. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and good luck with the auto tiling.